corner of your paper, and then write the word chest. Next to it, the number one. Exercise number one for the pecs will be pec deck for six to ten reps to failure. Now from here on, you won't have to write the words to failure, as that is a given, and six to ten reps is merely a suggested guideline. There is nothing magic about the number ten. If you reach ten, but you see you might go to thirteen reps to failure, don't stop at ten, go to thirteen. And at the other end, if you see by rep three, you won't reach even six reps, but only four or five, don't stop and reload. Get four or five, the next time you'll likely get six to ten. And if you don't have access to a pec deck, then flat bench dumbbell flies or cable crosses may be substituted. Directly underneath exercise one, write out the word superset, and directly underneath that, the number two. Exercise number two for the pecs will be the incline press, preferably on a machine such as the Smith, Hammer, Icarian, or Nautilus. If you don't have any machine for the incline press, you may perform either regular free weight barbell incline presses or incline dumbbell presses. Exercise number two should be performed for one to three reps, not six to ten, one to three reps. And make a parenthetic note next to the incline press. Use a fairly close hand grip. Your hand should be slightly closer than shoulder width. What should be wide are not your hands, but your elbows. Flare your elbows way back away from your torso toward your ears, and you'll feel all the stress go into the pecs. Contrary to popular opinion, a wide grip is not the best way to develop pecs. And for beginners, a superset means two sets, one set of each of two different exercises, where the performance of one is followed immediately by the other, as with pec decks supersetted or followed immediately by incline press. All right, now write down the word back, still under day one, write down the word back, and then the number one itself. Exercise number one for the back will be close grip, palms up, pull downs, six to ten repetitions. Close grip, palms up, pull downs. Directly underneath that, write down the number two, which will be regular style, not stiff-legged, but regular deadlifts. The regular style deadlift is a very productive exercise, the most productive exercise of all, in fact, because it stimulates so much muscle mass, everything on the backside of the body from the Achilles tendon to the nape of the neck. However, there is a bit of a risk factor here, not seen with most other exercises, so listen carefully. If you have one available and you are strong enough, use an Olympic bar with a 45-pound plate on each end of the bar so you don't have to bend over quite so far. Always start with the bar rolled back flush against your shins, grasp the bar with a slightly wider than shoulder width grip, and use an interlocking hand grip where one hand is overhand, the other hand is underhand. Squat down in such a fashion that your hips are at least slightly lower than your shoulders. And most important of all, keep your back perfectly flat and your head up. Keep your back perfectly flat and your head up. You might even pick out a point on the wall that crevice where the wall meets the ceiling, and keep your attention trained on that unwaveringly throughout. Then stand up in a deadlift fashion with considerable rotation around the hips until you're standing perfectly straight, no need to arch backwards. Then put the bar back down, reset, and do another. Perform five to eight reps as close to failure as you're willing to go. There is no superset here, by the way. There will be no superset unless I specify. And where there is no superset, you may rest as long as necessary, but no longer. Don't overcomplicate this issue. Use your common sense. Let your breathing slow down. And as soon as you feel ready to resume training, do so. Do not allow the workout to degenerate into a race against the clock. And don't malinger either. If you have problems with your lower back, shrugs may be substituted and do six to 10 reps to failure. That's all on day one, just four total sets. Then 96 hours or four days later is day two. Write down the words day two. On day two, you will train legs. The first exercise is leg extensions, supersetted with exercise number two, leg press. Now, just to the right of the words leg extension and leg press, using a common bracket or a parenthesis, 
indicate that each is to be performed for 8 to 15 reps. If you don't have a leg press, substitute squats, preferably in a Smith machine. You're not going to be doing leg curls for a while. Just because an exercise is done traditionally for a certain muscle doesn't mean, of course, that you are morally or legally bound to do it all year round. One of the first lessons I learned as a trainer years ago is that the leg biceps and the biceps of the upper arm overtrain extremely easily. Besides, the hamstrings will receive sufficient stimulation for now from the deadlift and the leg press and the squat. I would like to make a very important point here. This program is designed for the exclusive purpose of marshalling all of your body's energy and resources onto the side of maximum growth in your major muscle groups. Any exercise you might add beyond what is listed here will merely subtract from maximum growth in the major muscle groups. Very often, when I give this program to a fellow client, he will say at the end, well, Mr. Mincer, I see you don't have me doing leg curls for the hamstrings, in fact. No seated calf raise for the inner calf. No bent over dumbbell concentration curls for the lower outer third of the biceps. And we're not doing this for that and that for this and on and on ad infinitum. And I respond, sir, but that is precisely how you were training before. And that is why you made no progress and were prompted to call me for counseling. You so burned yourself out with all those exercises. You dug so deep of a hole. Your body never had the opportunity to recover from the merely exhaustive effects of the exercise, let alone grow. Why not build a 20-inch arm first, then worry about the details? Remember, the issue of volume in anaerobic exercise is a negative factor, and that your purpose is not to see how many sets you can do or how long you can endure. Your purpose is to do the precise amount of exercise required to stimulate growth, then get out of the gym, go home, rest, and grow. After the leg extension, leg press, superset, take a rest. Go drink some water, walk around the gym for a minute or two. Then finish up quite simply with a set of standing calf raises, 12 to 20 reps. And that is it for day two. Ninety-six hours, or four days after legs, is day three. On day three, you'll train delts and arms. For delts, you start out with dumbbell laterals. Some people call them side raises, six to ten reps. After a brief rest, but no superset here, proceed to exercise number two for delts, either bent over dumbbell laterals, or if one is available, sit in a pec deck backwards and work your rear delts six to ten reps here too. After delts, you'll work your arms. You might write down the word arms. Exercise number one for arms is barbell curls, six to ten. Six to ten reps with barbell curls. And that is a straight bar, not an easy curl bar. Easy curls do not work the biceps. They work the brachialis on the outer part of the arm. Do straight bar barbell curls. Exercise number two for the arms is tricep press downs with either a straight bar or a V bar, but do not use a rope. Do not use a rope, either a straight bar or a V bar. Six to 10 reps for the tricep press down. And if a press down machine is not available, Perform one set of lying French presses for six to ten reps. Immediately after the press down, in superset fashion, proceed to dips between parallel bars for three to five reps to failure. Three to five. If you can do more than five reps with your body weight, then add weight. And if you can't do any positive or full range dips, then place a chair or bench between the dip bars Stand up into the straight arm, locked elbow position, and lower yourself in negative fashion, taking several seconds to reach the bottom. Then stand up on the chair into the straight arm position and do it again. When you can perform up to 10 negative dips, with each rep taking several seconds to complete, you should be able to do regular full range dips. Okay, 96 hours later is day four. Legs, yes, legs again. This time you will start with leg extensions and follow immediately in superset fashion with Smith machine or free weight squats, but don't do hack squats unless absolutely forced to do so. Hack squats are not very productive and they stress the knees inordinately. You will perform the leg extensions differently this time using approximately 30 pounds more than the last time when you perform the leg extension with the leg press 
you will do but one positive rep, lifting the lower legs until they are in the straight leg, locked knee position. You will hold that position statically. This is called a static hold rep. The weight will be sufficiently heavy so that you're limited to holding the straight leg, locked knee position for approximately 10 to 25 seconds. There will come a point during that period, of course, when you won't be able to hold it anymore, and you'll say to yourself, if I don't start to lower this thing in the next moment or two, it's going to go crashing down. Do not let that happen. When you recognize it's necessary, lower the leg slowly in controlled negative fashion, not hyper-slow or imperceptibly slow, but under strict control all the way down to the bottom. And make sure that you keep your buttocks planted firmly in the seat, as there is a tendency to want to come up off the seat when your thighs are burning and torque it down. Do not torque it down. Lower with the strength of the thigh muscles alone. Then proceed immediately to the squat and perform 8 to 15 reps to failure. Take a rest for a couple minutes. Go get some water. And finish once again with a set of standing calf raises 12 to 20. And then four days later, you start over with day one and repeat the four workout protocol as already described. Whenever I have a superset listed, as with pec deck and incline press, or leg extension leg press, or leg extension squat, start the warm up on the second exercise. For instance, when performing the leg extension squat superset, if you start with the leg extensions without having first warmed up the glutes, spinal erectors, and so forth, by doing a couple of sets of squats first off, as you finish the leg extension and you're heading to the squat, you'll say to yourself, but my goodness, I forgot to warm up for the squat. Same thing with the incline press and the leg press. By warming up on the second exercise first, you cover all your bases in terms of a warm up. And you'll also have the weight set on that exercise so that you may perform a true superset, where one exercise is followed immediately by another with no rest in between. 